Hey folks, welcome back. Well, we got a uh, some issues on this um, 2000 F350 that uh, 7.3 power stroke. This one here is uh, it cranks for a really long time before it eventually starts when it's cold. Uh, it will run good taking off from the shop here um, until you get about a mile or so, and then it gets a little bit of engine warmth there and then it uh, gets real sluggish pedal and then if you keep going uh, eventually this thing will die and it will become a, uh, a no start um, and we're losing uh, we're losing um, high pressure oil and when that's happening um, and so basically what I'm going to do is, is uh, show in this video is how to isolate uh, that particular um, problem and everything so you know how to isolate it from being a uh, injector leak possibly or the high pressure oil pump itself um, because this one here is basically uh, needs it needs a new high pressure oil pump that's what we got going on with it um, and so let's let's get started with that um, I did a, a clip of this thing um, showing uh, you know how to hook up the uh, gauges and all that kind of stuff and I'll probably just go ahead and um, show that right now as to what we're you know what we're experiencing this is and this is on a cold engine okay so now let's have a look see at um, one that isn't working correctly so we've got uh, the lone wolf 2000 hooked up there to the solenoid we're going to uh, jump just 12 volts into the IPR like we did on the other one we got that now we'll watch the gauge all right I'm trying to figure out what that noise might have been but um, anyways yeah, that one's can only can only produce uh, not even 1500 psi, you know, and uh, so that pump is basically, um, you know, we know that the reservoir and everything which is underneath here, you know, the reservoir's uh, full and it's not leaking down or anything like that. So, um, and then um, we know that the IPR can uh, close and everything like that and that it's operating like it's supposed to um, so basically this one here needs a uh, new high pressure pump okay so this is what we've got set up here is we've got this as a number six uh, o-ring boss fitting which is just made in you know right into a hydraulic fitting for um, quarter inch size hose you know and then we've got uh, 5,000 pound gauge because you know we're going to be up in here in the 3033 somewhere around there you know on a good pump and everything so and then this deal right here is just a fitting i found um online somewhere it's a number six o-ring boss to a three eighths pipe and then it just plugs off so basically you plumb in the one side of this to the uh, high pressure oil pump and then you plug the other side off and that deadheads it and then while you're doing that, obviously you have to um, full field the uh, IPR so to get it to close, or else you're not going to get the correct reading out of it. So let's go ahead and install this setup um, on this pickup, being a known good one. So that way we can uh, I can show you exactly what a reading would be on a, on a good one here. So, all right, so we're going to get in here to. Uh, these fittings right here um, <clears throat> one thing I like to do is I like to get uh, some of these uh, connectors you know like this oil temp uh, sensor here the ICP you just kind of get them out of the way we will be uh, unhooking the uh, IPR right down there and then we're gonna plug in um, I've made this little jumper wire here I got this uh, connector off of an old um, 7.3 valve cover this is you know one of the uh, was be for the injectors um 
and then I just wired it up the same like you know this positive lead goes um, on the same <clears throat> terminal as it would be positive like coming from the uh, wiring harness on the pickup you know that's I don't know if it really matters or not but I just did it the same um, so basically um, trying to think of what colors we got here this is the uh, positive right here the way this connector would go into the IPR is exactly like this so this blue is the uh, positive and I got the negative going on that side you know this will just clip down on there like that and then alligator clips on the other end there <clears throat> to uh, clip to the battery because that's going to fulfill this uh, IPR it's going to basically it's going to close it so that it can build up as much oil pressure uh, as it can but here's a, another shot of that uh, fitting right there and I'll show you how those come off okay so I'm going to try my best uh, to show this on this particular fitting you know this is that black um, little ring around here and um, what you want to do is, you know, I've got something like this for like those uh, little air uh, grinder things or whatnot. Um, and you want to get this thing in between and just kind of work it in here. Flip that over. See if that helps. This thing's kind of bent that let's see if I can straighten that out okay so you work that in there like that and then you can kind of wiggle it up and down I'm trying to get where y'all can see it but, and then you'll just kind of have to work this um, Holds off of here. And you just kind of pull. I gotta use two hands. Well, never mind. I got it. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Let's get this brought out. Oop, I wanted to keep that on there, but anyways, this uh deal here is going to be like this and what you want to do is get in here and work it down like so in between there with the uh, with the tool like this and you can kind of wiggle this down like this and then you kind of just have to turn the uh, hose you know like where my thumb is here I'm trying to just hold this on there because you see it's not going to stay um, and move this around wiggle it pull it and it'll just pop out you know and then when it snaps back together you just snap it back on and it'll snap up like this that's how they're how they're designed it seems kind of odd that a little chintzy thing like this can hold that much kind of a oil pressure but uh they can they do so anyways that's how you get those off all right so with those lines off uh, next thing we're gonna do is get these uh, get the fittings out of there um, I'm gonna I use uh, something like this just a six inch kind of a wobble extension um, it's a three-quarter uh, socket and um, it'll actually snake in there right up next to the ICP if you don't I mean you can remove the ICP sensor there if um, uh, you can't get to it, but I can usually get to it just fine. And we'll pull them things out. Just like that. Just watch your uh, alternator if you don't have a rubber <laughs> or could disconnect your batteries. Um, the other one, you know, this, this fitting right here, this is a pretty good straight shot at it no matter what. So anyways, we'll get them pulled out. Okay, there is the fitting. Well, we got it out. We're just gonna go ahead and replace the O-ring there. Now inside of there, I don't know if you can really be able to tell, but there's a spring 
in there that needs to you know make sure that that uh, is in there and leave it in there I don't know if we can spring out of here okay that's what it looks like this goes in that goes out so I leave them in there just with the tests and all that they're supposed to be in there so I would imagine they need to be even with the um, uh, test, you know, the test fittings and all that stuff. So, um, anyways, we're gonna get this uh, other one out of there, and then um, we'll start with the. Uh, I'm gonna put the gauge on this side, and then the plug on that side. All right, so we got the uh, gauge all plumbed in. That one side there. I like to use these wrenches that I have chopped off here, you know, gets you in a little easier. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to thread in this uh, one here that's plugged off. Okay, just like that. Next thing we're going to do is I got the IPR already uh, unplugged, so I'm going to plug in my um, uh, pigtail into there. Just like that. Okay, so reconnect your batteries. We've got uh, that hooked on positive. I don't have the negative hooked up yet because I wanted to show you uh, the gauge and everything like that without full fielding the <coughs> IPR. Um, this is a newer pickup, 2002, so we don't need the Lone Wolf 2000 because we don't have the uh, uh, solenoid in here. So we just pull this out like that. And then I'm going to stick it right on there to uh, crank the engine over because this just goes straight down to the starter. So all we're doing is just cranking the engine, you know, with the keys off, everything. Matter of fact, you know, like set your keys up on your dash or something like that. This is a manual, so make sure that, you know, this is it. It's in neutral. Um, you know, it's not going to start on you, but you still want to be safe. But, you know, put the keys on the dash. That way you know that uh, it's off and everything like that. So... Um, most likely it's not going to run anyways because you got the pump unhooked, but you don't want it trying to start at any, at any rate, so it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, so let's go ahead and um, do this. All right, crank it. Okay, so we've got nothing there. This is why you have to fulfill the IPR. All right, so we'll connect that there. And then we'll do the same thing. Where you can see the gauge. And there we go. So that's what a good pump would do. Unhook this. So now all we gotta do is just pull it apart and then we gotta do the air leak test, uh, which we'll do on the other pickup but we'll uh, show you how I do the air leak test to uh, test you know, each bank to figure out you know, what, what you've got going on there. So this particular test really tests the IPR and its function and all that stuff so you know that it's uh, functioning and working good. Um, sometimes, I've never run into it, but every once in a while I guess you can have an IPR that might be functioning electrically, but maybe it's not closing as much as it needs to. Um, I don't know, I keep a couple of spares around that I kind of know that work in, in work decent enough that, you know, but it's a, it's a good way to test that. We've tested our high pressure oil pump. You know, we got here about 3,500 uh, PSI, so we know that that pump can deliver uh, what it needs to. All right, now we're back on this uh, pickup. You know, we know that the high pressure oil pump is, is bad, but we're still gonna do the air leak test on here. One thing to show y'all how, how I do it. And, um, you know, this line I already took off here, showing you how to take these, uh, these style fittings off. Um, so anyways, now the next thing we're gonna do is get a, um, same thing with the, this fitting is, is 
just like the one on the pump and um, you know get a I'm gonna have to get a you know spray this off and should have done that before taking the line off so I'm gonna stick the line back on there and then um, gonna uh, spray brake clean and all kinds and pressurize the air and all that stuff to uh, clean all that dirt off there because we're gonna end up taking that uh, fitting out of there and I'll explain why I like to do it this way Okay, so got the fitting out um, up there. Now, what I meant to say uh, before when I said these are these are just like the ones on the pump, well, they're they're very similar. This part's all the same, but these are actually number five uh, O-ring boss fittings. So any of the fittings that are into the head, whether it be you can use um, the same one I'm doing right now, or you can pull the uh, all right, so I lost some of the footage. Anyways, I had the the uh, this airline right here. You know, I had it connected in there, but now I've got it just connected in on this side, which you can see, you know, I took the line off. This is going into the high pressure oil pump. And then I got the line down in here to uh, going right into the head or the you know fuel rail or the oil rail. Actually, Ford calls it a fuel rail, I think, <coughs> according to their service manual so anyways um when you do this uh you definitely do need to have a valve on here and so what i'm going to do is go ahead and connect this all right so then you just go ahead and um open the valve up and then uh this side's easy because of the you can you can usually hear oil leaks and stuff like that you know out of this deal this side I can usually hear them pretty good with keeping this on but you can you can remove uh, this deal here to uh, get past your um, oh that little little elbow tube or whatever that's in there um, <clears throat> but anyways you know we can see that you know there's there's no leaks whatsoever and then I'll uh, explain here why I do it this particular way because there is another another um, plug right here you can remove that plug and that's still gonna take a, a number five o-ring boss which means you don't have to remove this line and you don't have to remove um, basically this fitting out of there but I'll explain why I do that uh, why I do it this way versus that so anyways obviously now if you were to just take this line off of here uh, there could be oil shooting out of here for a long ways and so you want to close this and then um, uh, and so when you actually have no leaks you know if you have a leak in the system a lot of times this won't matter because you'll it'll bleed off the air pressure anyways but See all the oil coming out of there? So I went a little bit too fast, but now that we can let that we can bleed this off really slowly, now we're open, everything's good. So now we can go ahead and just remove the line and everything is good. So why do I do it this way? Um, because if you plumb yourself into like this port right here, or if you plumb yourself into where the ICP goes, right here, you can remove the ICP and do it. Well, you still got the line here and it still goes back to the high pressure pump. So when you air pressure this side and it's it's got this hose or whatever, you can actually do both sides just with the ICP, but you have to full field the uh, IPR um, like we did with the deadhead test on the pump, but you actually still, even though the IPR is full fielded, I don't think they close completely and you still hear a gurgling sound inside of, of the high pressure oil pump. So if you do it this way, by removing this line off of each side, so you got that line removed and this line removed and sticking the air 
pressure uh, hose right into this port, you're not getting any back feeding out of here because this is now removed and isolated from the high pressure oil pump and the IPR. And then this side is completely isolated between, you know, cause this line is, is, is off and uh, you're isolating everything on this bank and this bank. So we know now 100% that we don't have any leaks on this side and we don't have any leaks on this side that um, if we were to do this air leak test first, which is exactly how I would have done it, I would have done the air leak test first because that's, you know, uh, six, seven out of 10, that's probably your, your problem is, is injector seals and all that type of stuff for having these uh, low high pressure oil symptoms, whether it's, you know, uh, hard starting or not running good enough and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, we've got them isolated and now I know 100% this bank is good, this bank is good, and you know we can put all this back together. We've already deadheaded the pump. We know that it can only produce about 13, 1400 PSI deadheaded, cold. It actually gets worse if you were to uh, you know, put this thing all back together, start and run this engine, because it will start and run when it's cold. And it'll actually, like I said, it'll take off uh, from the shop here and it'll run good for a while until you get about a mile-ish. And then it starts to run real bad. And if you keep on going, it's gonna get eventually where it just completely dies and it gets to be a no start. And by then you're only, at cranking, you're only producing about 250 PSI when you need to get at least 500 to run. And then if you, if you were to get the pickup, you know, limped back over here or whatever, with this engine warm and you do the deadhead deal like we did before, uh, fulfill the IPR, hook your gauge up to there, you actually don't hardly get anything, nothing out of this, this particular high pressure oil pump. So it is confirmed 100% bad, needs to be replaced. Um, now we know that, uh, you know, all the injector seals are good on this side, all the injector seals are good on this side and we can, you know, and it doesn't take a whole lot of tools to be able to get uh, this done. So we'll basically do a recap on that as far as what all this stuff is. And, um, you know, I'm gonna get all this uh, taken apart and I'll get the lines off there. We'll lay it all out and show you kind of what we got. All right, so this is our basic uh, tool setup here. Um, we've got, you know, the number six O-ring boss here going to the gauge. And then we got our block off number six to, uh, I think it's just three eighths pipe. Um, you know, I mean, this wouldn't be very good as a permanent type of thing for that kind of pressure, but for uh, just doing it um, temporarily for a second, that, that works just fine. Um, but yeah, three eighths pipe plug there. Um, this here is a number five O-ring boss to a quarter inch pipe. And then, uh, you know, just with an airline, this isn't a, as big a deal because you're only limited to what, you know, I think my air setup is like 140 PSI, so we're not doing a whole lot, you know, and then just a quarter inch ball valve hooked to the airline there. That's really all we're doing. The only thing I'm gonna add on, you know, with this uh, set now that I'm, in the last couple of years, I've been working on a lot more of these, um, and not relying just on the uh, scanner because I have a video about relying just on the scanner and um, how it burned me. And so I think the the next thing I'm going to get is just a uh, another gauge set up with a longer a longer hose, and I'll go with a number five O-ring boss just like this fitting to a gauge. That way. I could plumb it into um, either this port or the one back here. There's another one back there somewhere, um, or maybe not. I don't remember if there's another one. There's a couple different ones. Yeah, there's one right there. So you could plumb it in right there or plumb it in right there um, and go out and drive the pickup with by still having the ICP in and um, everything else in place and have the gauge out where you could actually uh 
do it because if I had I'd have done that before uh, I wouldn't have replaced one of these high pressure oil pumps based on what happened in that particular video I'll put a link down in the strip description for that video it's it's titled something uh, I got burned on this whatever um, because basically I um, didn't mechanically check any pressures and I was getting a low pressure like 15 or 1600 psi when it demanded at high throttle and I thought it was a, a high pressure oil pump not being able to deliver when in case that was not what, what the, the cause was um, so anyways that'd be the only thing I'm gonna add to this particular setup here but this will pretty much do everything um, you know and the way I did it here as I just you know as a kind of a recap or whatever um, by going to removing this high pressure oil line from this uh, oil rail and plumbing it the the air pressure right into there I mean you are completely isolating everything out of the system to you know you know you're gonna if you have any leaks out here you know you're going to have leaks out here because you'll be able to see those. Uh, but internally, if you have any oil leaks, you know, this air pressure test will usually get most of them. <clears throat> and you might have to, uh, if you don't hear nothing like that, you might have to run your engine up to operating temp. And then you might have to, to take everything apart and do your air leak test, you know, because there's two different symptoms I had on here. Um, you know, the, at, when this thing was cold, uh, deadheading this pump, we get about, you know, 13, 1400 PSI. But when this engine's warmed up, I did that deadhead thing and I got nothing out of it. And that was full fielding the um, IPR and all that stuff. So um, I do have a, another couple of videos out, one or one at least, uh, doing this particular, um, s some of these similar type tests. Uh, on an old body style, which, you know, I mean, it's very similar, but just has different fittings and all that stuff. Um, I don't think I showed full feeling the IPR though, which I maybe have, for, you know, forgot to show in that video. Cause I think somebody even commented like, oh, you're supposed to full field the IPR. Well, I did, I just didn't show it to you, sorry. Um, not like I did this time. Um, so anyways, hopefully this helps you out as far as those particular uh, problems go and um anyways thanks for watching